You guys! You guys! Something super crazy is happening, you guys. You went on a diet? This is serious, Cal! Well, it looks like South Park's done it again. And damn, has it had an impact. Joining the Pandaverse is yet another South Park movie slash TV special on Paramount, with its primary focus being Kathleen Kennedy and the obsessive pandering that goes on at Disney, along with satirizing AI and the overuse of the multi-universe plot. Upon this being announced as an event for whatever reason, I'll admit I wasn't initially all that into it. Most of what South Park does is good, rather it be political or just completely new. I do miss the days of longer seasons, but there's no denying the impact the Pandaverse has had, and after analyzing it, I think I know why that is. You see, anybody can do this, and for South Park, it's to be expected. I don't believe making fun of this deserves a plot in its own right, but not only have they masterfully pulled it off, but they've done it in a way that shows off both sides of the argument, something a lot of people didn't even know existed, while still providing an engaging plot that can be enjoyed even if you don't give a shit. It focuses on the Panderverse, where everybody is a diverse woman, or in this case, a replacement, along with a side plot in which nobody can do anything due to a lack of knowledge and over-reliance on AI. Like most recent episodes, it's one big satire, but it's some of the best satire they've done in a long time. I'm not downgrading what they've done recently, and I'm not even saying it's the best special they've had, but I think it stands out for a number of reasons. It's not the kind of thing we usually do, as it's by no means a movie, but given the effect it's had, I feel it deserves a look. This is the newest South Park movie, or a uh, special, uh, event, uh, joining the Pandaverse. We open with diverse Cartman arguing about going to school, and right offhand, it's clear they've nailed it. I just had explosive fucking diarrhea all night because you decided to get us KFC for dinner. Have a good day at school, sweetie. Fuck you, mom. This is bullshit. How do you get your mom arrested for child abuse? Whenever the show has to have somebody else portray a main character for whatever reason, specifically Cartman due to him being the most unique, it's usually an impressive feat and this is no exception. She's voiced by Janisha adams Gennard, known for her role in Black Panther, which they've made fun of at length, and she's done a damn good job at sounding like him. You guys! You guys! <laughs> Fuck you, Cal! You have to help me! Is Cal's mom still a big fat bitch in this universe? You have to be cool to me, Cal. PC principal says so. Unfortunately, the other characters don't do anything that notable, aside from outfits and very basic character traits. Tammy Mullins has sweet fucking knockers. Dude, Kenny, enough about Tammy's knockers. That being said, they don't really have catchphrases or anything, so they probably did the best they could. It's revealed to be a dream, and Cartman's afraid Kathleen Kennedy is going to get him. I'm scared, Mom. Will you please just look and make sure Kathleen Kennedy isn't under my bed? The scene is outright hilarious, getting in everything you could think of from Kathleen to complaining about the patriarchy, and they do it within a few seconds. I've told you there's no such thing as Disney executives who replace everyone you love with diverse women who complain about the patriarchy. We then move into the subplot, in which Randy's sick of his kids not being able to do anything, and teach them if something's broken to simply call a handyman. You take out your phone, and you call the handyman! The problem is, he can't fix it right now, and since nobody knows how to do anything, he can't pay him to have it done sooner, as everybody's already done that. And this leads into some real good commentary about the danger of AI, and how even the therapist has been replaced. There's an especially funny scene when Randy asks Siri how to fix the stove door, and even though the answer is relatively simple, he still wants it done for him. Hey Siri, okay, can you do that for me? I don't think the Randy plot is getting as much attention, and I can definitely see why that is, but there's no denying he's probably the best character. It's not too often his plots aren't hilarious, and this is another example of that. The fact is, Trey Parker has maintained dislike for the first three seasons, and the lack of Randy may have something to do with that. To get back on topic, the AI satire was well done. 
So Cartman says he thinks his dreams are actually windows into alternate universes, and they tell him everybody's sick of the multi-universe. As they make fun of that plot being overused, obviously just that happens, sending Cartman to the Pandaverse and sending diverse Cartman to their universe. Is that supposed to be Cartman? It ain't Cartman, but it's still fat. And the like button is down there too if you enjoy the video, as is the option to subscribe. Unless I'm not diverse enough. Of course, neither side believe it, thinking it's some kind of game, but upon telling PC Principal, he says he can't see anything wrong and accuse them of being racist. This scene is probably one of the episode's highlights, explaining the difference between actual fleshed out characters and, well, blatant pandering. And the comparison to Spider-Man's Miles Morales is a great example. I'm not gonna pretend I know anything about that, because I don't, but based on pretty much any notable source, that is a character that was fleshed out, given a real personality, and doesn't only exist for the sake of making Spider-Man black. This is in contrast to the recent Batman series, which they really didn't want to give up on, that, due to its infamously negative reputation, I know most of what's wrong with it. The episode didn't make that comparison, but it's kind of obvious. Because I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. But yeah, watching the principal act like it's no big deal, despite it clearly being real life, is hilarious and covers just about every base. I don't see a problem with it at all. And if you boys don't think Eric can be a black woman, then maybe the problem is you. This means they have to help, and uh, one complaint I do have about this is... I would have liked to have seen a bit more of the Pandaverse. Take the students, for example. Aside from the main ones, there's no obvious reference as to who's who. They mention Clyde a lot, but there's no way of knowing who he is, and you'd think that wouldn't be the hardest thing to do. It's not a big complaint, but it would have been nice to see. One thing that is funny is despite the Pandaverse seemingly only consisting of diverse women, they still look at Cartman the way you'd expect them to. White heterosexual males think they welcome anywhere. <laughs> it's possible that white men do exist somewhere in that universe, but we never actually see it, so it is a funny thing to bring up. Meanwhile, the handymen have all become extremely rich, and the adults decide to blame the college as their degrees got them nowhere. Hey, hey, college! You know what you are? You're a scam! College is a scam! He tears up his student loan bill and attempt to attack the college with a catapult, but they can't put it together and all chip in to pay a handyman $20,000. Then, upon using it to break a window, another handyman immediately fixes it, making the whole thing pointless. We then cut to Disney, and what happens here is so amazing, it's best to let it speak for itself. We don't understand it, sir. We keep making the same movie over and over and pandering to everyone, but suddenly it's not working. Look, I don't want to have to say it, but I think the problem is Kathleen Kennedy. They explain that Kathleen Kennedy may be from a different universe, and this could be the result of somebody misusing the Panderstone. Then, upon seeing their version of Kathleen Kennedy, it's made clear that probably is the case. But I don't think I need to explain how brilliant this is. Like I said, it speaks for itself. They eventually explain that it's not her, and Eric tries to get help from Diverse Butters. I'm not supposed to have anyone in my room! I'm grounded! Yeah, this comparison is especially funny. The real Kathleen Kennedy fucking chloroforms Butter's dad, and the handymen have become so rich their services have moved to space. They use AI to find a match for their Kathleen Kennedy, being Eric Cartman, leading the adults to naturally blame their stuff not getting fixed on her. They also agree to help find Eric, while meanwhile Diverse Eric was seemingly putting together a computer to get back to her universe, but in actuality just wanted to play Boulder's Gate 3. Wow. It really is Cartman. After this, Bob Iger shows up and tells them they have to get everybody back to their own universe before everything they care about is destroyed. Which they do, using a place with integrity and a broken door. No, that's actually what they say. It's pretty funny. 
And this brings us to the most notable part of the episode, when Kathleen Kennedy finally explains to Cartman what happened, and how they used the Pandra Stone to appeal to everybody while making the same movie over and over again, inevitably leading to the Cartman version of Kathleen coming through and trapping her in the Pandaverse. However, despite what some people may have expected, it's not completely one-sided. Yeah, Kathleen lazily abused the Pandra Stone because it was easier than coming up with real ideas, but it was partly due to obsessive hate mail that Cartman was, in this case, completely responsible for. I wouldn't have tried to fight racism with the Pandra Stone if you hadn't written all those letters! I wouldn't have written all those letters if you haven't tried to fight racism with the fucking Pandra Stone! The implication is that both sides are partly wrong, and I definitely think that's true. While nobody in the right mind would be a fan of Disney's latest work, excessive hate mail does not help in any way, and it's probably not the most constructive kind of criticism. As mentioned earlier, I wasn't a huge fan of this episode's idea at first, because it seemed like the same thing we've already heard, but as we've seen here, they've done a good job presenting both sides in a reasonable manner. I'm not defending Disney by any means, but I still think the point they've made is quite valid. Like I said, it's led to both sides thinking they've won. I don't know why you would think that. To me, the message is obvious. And it's for that reason I've never been a huge fan of obsessing with the woke concept. On occasion I have, it's always kind of fun, but it's not something I'd make a habit of doing. I know some people won't like that South Park didn't just blatantly rip into them, but I don't think that would have led to anything that interesting, aside from what we've already heard a million times. Their ability to cover both sides while still getting the important points across prove again why South Park is one of the best shows, period, and in my opinion, the best of their kind. This may be controversial, but The Simpsons aren't doing anything like this now. In fact, they haven't for two decades, and should probably just stop. So to wrap things up, everybody gets back to their own universe. Obviously, Kenny's death has to get in there. Oh, yo, bitch, you killed Kenny! You fat ho! And Kathleen Kennedy agrees to only make original content. They also deal with the handyman problem by bringing in a bunch of them so they'll all be equally poor. Meaning in the end, nobody has to know how to do anything. And that was South Park joining the Pandaverse. And I think you know my opinion on this by now. I think it goes without saying that Trey and Matt are geniuses and will never be outdone as far as satire goes. There's no way this could have been done any better, rather it be Disney's pandering or the equally funny AI plot, and even if you don't care about that stuff, it's still funny as hell. The unique way South Park does comedy simply does not get old, and even though I wish they'd make some episodes that don't focus on current stuff, when they make some Something this good, you really can't argue with it. Some people think it may be the beginning of some kind of change, given the attention it's gotten, and while I can hope that to be true, I don't know if we can expect that to happen. Disney themselves have gone back on a few things, even before this, and after the Indiana Jones catastrophe, maybe they'll get the idea that this is not exactly profitable, but then again, they've proven to be void of any remote common sense in the past, so who knows? At least South Park have, again, turned out something truly unique that I see as an example of how we should do things going forward. I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but it's the best we can do. I'm the Analyst, and remember kids, if you don't want to be replaced by AI, then just see if Amber Heard has an opening for an assistant. I mean, it would suck, but... Even AI wouldn't take that job. So, you've made it to the end. That's an impressive feat indeed. Since you managed that, I guess check out the gaming channel, in which I cover a variety of gaming topics, like analysis videos such as this one. If you're into that, then press the link in the description. It's that simple. <laughs>